Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today in evolution part 3, we shall discuss about the theories of biological evolution. In the theories of biological evolution, we have Lamarck's theory, Darwin's theory of natural selection, mutation theory, modern synthetic theory, evolution by anthropogenic sources and adaptive radiation theory. Let us discuss one by one. Lamarck's theory. John Baptist de Lamarck was the first to postulate the theory of evolution, his famous book Philosophy Zoologic in the year 1809. What were the principles of Lamarckian theory? The two principles were the theory of use and disuse and the theory of inheritance of acquired characters. The theory of use and disuse, organs that are used often will increase in size and those that are not used will degenerate. Neck in giraffe is an example of use and absence of limbs in snakes is an example for disuse theory. Theory of inheritance of acquired characters. Characters that are developed during the lifetime of an organism are called acquired characters and these are inherited. Inheritance of acquired characteristics. Characteristics developed by use could be passed on to the offspring. Lamarck said this was how giraffes got their long necks. By using them to stretch for food, their necks became longer and that trait was passed on to the offspring. Over time, giraffe's necks became longer and longer. You can see in the image on the right side that the necks became longer because of reaching the food on the tree branches and the neck elongated because of excessive usage. The main objection to Lamarckism Lamarck's theory of acquired characters was disproved by August Wiesmann who conducted experiments on mice for 20 generations by cutting the tails and breeding them. All mice born were with tail. According to Wiesmann's proof, the change in the somatoplasm will not be transferred to the next generation but changes in the germplasm will be inherited. Here you can see in this image, the parent's tail were amputated and the parents were bred. Around 19 generations, when they were bred, they found that the offspring did not have short tails. They had normal tails, indicating that the characters which were acquired were not inherited. Changes in somatoplasm are not inherited and changes in germplasm were inherited. In this image, you can see whatever comes in the germ line is inherited. Whatever comes in the soma is not inherited to the further future generations. Neo Lamarckism. The followers of Lamarck, Neo Lamarckist, Edward Cope, Henry Fairfield Osborne, Andrew Packard, Henry Drinker Spencer tried to explain Lamarck's theory on a more scientific basis. They considered that adaptations are universal. Organisms acquire new structures due to their adaptations to the change environmental conditions. Secretions. They argued that external conditions stimulate the somatic cells to produce certain secretions which reach the sex cells through the blood and bring about variations in the offspring. Darwin's theory of natural selection. Charles Darwin explained the theory of evolution in his book The Origin of Species by Natural Selection. During his journey around the earth, he made extensive observations of the plants and animals. He noted a huge variety and remarkable similarities among organisms and their adaptive features to cope up to the environment. He proved that fittest organisms can survive and leave more progenies than the unfit ones through the natural selection. Darwin's theory was based on several facts and observations and influences. They are Overproduction or prodigality of production, struggle for existence, universal occurrence of variations, origin of species by natural selection. Let us see one by one. Overproduction or prodigality of production. All living organisms increase their population in large numbers. For example, salmon fish produces about 28 million eggs during breeding season and if all of them hatch, the seas would be filled with salmon in few generations. Overproduction of the offspring in any given generation, populations tend to create more progeny and then can survive to the reproductive age. Which population will likely lead to a struggle for survival 
cannot be predicted. It depends upon the environmental conditions and the organism. Elephant, the slowest breeder that can produce six young ones in its lifetime, can produce six million descendants at the end of 750 years in the absence of any check. Now, struggle for existence. Organisms struggle for food, space and mate. As these become a limiting factor, competition exists among the members of the population. Darwin denoted struggle for existence in three ways. Intraspecific struggle between the same species for food, space and mate. Interspecific struggle with different species for food and space. Struggle with the environment to cope with the climatic variations, flood, earthquakes and drought etc. Struggle for existence. Darwin was convinced that a process like artificial selection worked in nature. The struggle for existence means that the members of each species compete regularly to obtain food, living space and other necessities of life. Universal occurrence of variations. No two individuals are alike. There are variations even in identical twins. Even the children born of the same parents differ in color, height, behavior etc the useful variations found in an organism help them to overcome struggle and such variations are passed on to the next generation here you can see the overproduction of the animals the variation that occurs in the animals help them for natural selection and these characters that are acquired are inherited in the future generations origin of species by natural selection according to darwin Nature is the most powerful selective force. He compared origin of species by natural selection to a small isolated group. Darwin believed that the struggle for existence resulted in the survival of the fittest. Such organisms become better adapted to the change environment. What were the objections to Darwinism? Some objections raised against Darwinism were Darwin failed to explain the mechanism of variation. Darwinism explains the survival of the fittest but not the arrival of the fittest. He focused on small fluctuating variations that are mostly non-heritable. He did not distinguish between somatic and germinal variations. He could not explain the occurrence of vestigial organs over specialization of some organs like large tusks in extinct mammoths, oversized antlers in the extinct Irish deer, etc. So what are the differences between evolution and adaptation? Evolution is the never-ending development of species since the inception of life. Adaptation is the process of adjusting to the external environment in order to survive. Evolution is a very slow and can take multiple generations to see evident changes. Whereas adaptation is a very rapid and it can sometimes even be noticed in the same generation. Evolution in the prolonged course leads to emergence of new species. Species adapt to the environment in order to survive. Failure to adapt would lead to extinction. The changes brought by evolution are permanent and irreversible among the species, whereas the process of adaptation is reversible as it depends upon the external environment. Neo-Darwinism is the interpretation of Darwinian evolution through natural selection as it has been modified since it was proposed. New facts and discoveries about evolution have led to modifications of Darwinism. It is supported by Wallace, Heinrich Haeckel, Wiesmann and Mendel. This theory emphasizes the change in the frequency of genes in population arises due to mutation, variation, isolation and natural selection. Now let us move on to the mutation theory. Hugo de Veris put forward mutation theory. Mutations are sudden random changes that occur in an organism that is not heritable. Deveris carried out his experiments on the plant evening primrose, Onithera lamarckiana, and observed variations in them due to mutation. Normal plant evening primrose, about 50,000 specimens were taken and made self pollinated, and the seeds obtained were again cultivated, found that majority were of normal plants. Few plants, around 800, were different, having mutated characteristics. Again, these were self pollinated and majority of the plant were of mutated category and few plants acquired new characters because of new mutation. According to Deveris, sudden and large variations were responsible for the origin of new species 
whereas Lamarck and Darwin believed in gradual accumulation of all variations as the causative factors in the origin of new species. Hugo de Vries believed that mutations are and directionless, but Darwinian variations are small and directional. Hugo de Vries believed that speciation are due to mutation and are called saltation, single step large mutation. The birth of mutation theory was done by Hugo de Vries between 1848 to 1935, noted sudden origins of seemingly novel phenotypes after many generations of stability. Hypothesized that biochemical changes were occurring, these became known as mutations. Actually, his experiments were done on primroses and these changes which occurred in the plant were the product of hybridization between species of plants, but this was unknown at the time. What are the sudden features of mutation theory? Mutations are discontinuous variations, are transmitted to other generations. In naturally breeding populations, mutations occur from time to time. There are no intermediate forms as they are fully fledged. They are strictly subjected to natural selection. The theory of mutation of Hugo de Vries to sum up, mutations are discontinuous variations are the raw material of evolution. Mutations appear all of a sudden. They become operational immediately. Unlike Darwin's continuous variations or fluctuations, mutations do not revolve around the mean or normal character of the species. The same type of mutations can appear in a number of individuals of a species. All mutations are inheritable. Mutations appear in all conceivable directions. Useful mutations are selected by nature. Lethal mutations are eliminated. However, useless and less harmful ones can persist in the progeny. Accumulation of variations produce new species. Sometimes a new species is produced from a single mutation. Evolution is a jerky and discontinuous process. Now modern synthetic theory. Siebel Wright, Ronald Fisher, Ernst Mayer, Julian Huxley, Theodor C. S. Dobzhansky, George G. Simon and Haeckel explain natural selection in the light of post-Darwinian discoveries. Here you can see the images of the scientist Siebel Wright, Ronald Fisher, Ernst Mayer, Julian Huxley, Theodor C. S. Dobzhansky, George G. Simpson and Haeckel. According to this theory of modern synthesis, gene mutations, chromosomal mutations, genetic recombinations, natural selection and reproductive isolation are the five basic factors involved in the process of organic evolution. Gene mutation. Gene mutation refers to the changes in the structure of the gene. It is also called gene point mutation. It alters the phenotype of an organism and produces variations in their offspring. Here in this image you can see there are mutations at gene level in which one or more base pairs get changed. And these gene mutations can lead on to the natural selection which is the cause which guides the population for selective adaptation. Or these mutations will occur in chromosomal level. It is also called chromosomal operations. The chromosomal fragments exchanged or are lost in the exchange. The change in the chromosome may be structural or in the numbers. This results in genetic recombination which provides genetic variability without which change cannot take place. So the process occurs as a chance, migration and hybridization. Now chromosomal mutation. Chromosomal mutation refers to the changes in the structure of the chromosome due to deletion, addition, duplication, inversion or translocation. This too alters the phenotype of an organism and produces variations in the offspring. Here you can see the deletion where a portion of the arm of the chromosome is deleted. Duplication, a portion of the arm of the nucleotide sequence is duplicated. Inversion, where the nitrogenous bases are inverted. Translocation, where a portion of the nitrogenous bases in the arm of the chromosome is translocated to the opposite arm and in isochromosome. Genetic recombination is due to crossing over of genes during meiosis. It brings about genetic variations in the individuals of the same species and leads to heritable variations. Recombination is the process by which two DNA molecules exchange the genetic information, resulting in the production of new combination of alleles. It creates the genetic diversity at the level of genes and leads to variation. The common 
recombination technique is the crossing over that occurs during meiosis where there is exchange of genetic material between the arms of the non-homerogous chromosomes. Natural selection. Natural selection does not produce any genetic variations. But one such variation occur, it favors some genetic changes while rejecting others driving force of evolution. The mutations are changes that can be heritable variations. And these heritable variations are selected by the nature resulting in the natural selection. The natural selection can also occur because of a lot of conditions of life. And the natural selection that occurs helps in the formation of a variable genotype. The genotype is expressed as a phenotype. The reproductive isolation helps in preventing interbreeding between related organisms. The isolation may be of two types, geographical isolation, reproductive isolation. Reproductive isolation is prezygotic isolation and postzygotic isolation. Prezygotic isolation may be because of ecological factors, seasonal factors, ethological factors, physiological factors, mechanical factors, gametic mortality and isolatic mechanism. Reproductive isolation in postzygotic isolation, it is due to cytological, zygotic mortality, hybrid inviability, hybrid sterility and hybrid breakdown. To sum up the modern synthesis, Malthusian competition occurs where the geometric population growth and limited resources results in natural selection and the survival of the fittest. During the 19th century, this was proposed where there was variation between the breeds and the races and the subspecies. Mutation that was proposed by Hugo de Varis, where there is small changes in the individual characteristics, results in Mendelian inheritance, where two copies of each gene are obtained, one from each parent. And genetic variation occurs, where the alleles of the individual genes combining to give continuous variation. The natural selection, the genetic variation and the mental inheritance in the early 20th century contributed the evolution of the modern synthesis theory of evolution. What is the differences between the Darwinism and Neo-Darwinism? In Darwinism, the theory of evolution of species by natural selection advanced by Charles Darwin. Whereas Neo-Darwinism, it's a modern version of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection incorporating the findings of genetics. The Darwinism is the original theory, whereas Neo-Darwinism a modification based on the Mendelian genetics and modern synthesis of natural selection. Darwinism is a major driving force where there is accumulation of phenotypic variations, whereas Neo-Darwinism is a major driving force is the accumulation of genetic variations. Darwinism does not describe the reason for variation, whereas Neo-Darwinism describes the reason for variations as mutation genetic recombination, natural selection and reproductive isolation. In Darwinism, the natural selection occurs by the survival of the fittest and the removal of the unfitted organisms during a course of time. Whereas in Neo-Darwinism, the natural selection occurs by the differential amplification of the fittest genes and genotypes. In Darwinism does not believe isolation as a major component of evolution. Whereas Neo-Darwinism believes isolation as a major component of evolution. Now evolution by anthropogenic sources, natural selection or industrial melanism. Natural selection can be explained clearly through industrial melanism. Industrial melanism is a classical example of natural selection. In this case, this is exhibited by the peppered moth, Biston betularia. These are available in two colors, white and black. Before industrialization, the peppered moth, both white and black colored, were common in England. Pre-industrialization witnessed white colored background of the wall of the buildings, hence the white colored moth escaped from the predators. Post-industrialization, the tree trunks became dark due to the smoke and soot let out from the industries. The black moths camouflaged on the dark bark of the trees and the white moths were easily identified by the predators. Hence, the dark colored moth population was selected and their number increased when compared to the white moths before industrialization. Nature offered positive selection pressure to the black colored moths. The above proof shows that in a population, organisms that can adapt will survive and produce more progenies resulting in increase in the population through natural selection. Here in this image, you can see before industrialization, 
more white moths were present. After industrialization, more black moths progeny existed. Artificial selection. It is a byproduct of human exploitation of forests, oceans, fisheries or the use of pesticides, herbicides or drugs. For hundreds of years, humans have selected various types of dogs, all of which are variants of the single species of dog. If human beings can produce new varieties in a short period of time, then nature with its vast resources and long duration can easily produce new species by selection. Now, what is adaptive radiation? The evolutionary process which produces new species diverge from a single ancestral form becomes adapted to newly invaded habitats is called adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiations are best exemplified in closely related groups that have evolved in relatively short time. Darwin's finches and Australian marsupials are best examples for adaptive radiation. When more than one adaptive radiation occurs in an isolated geographical area, having the same structural and functional similarity, it is due to convergent evolution. Darwin's finches, their common ancestor, arrived on the Galapagos around 2 million years ago. During that time, Darwin's finches have evolved into 14 recognized species, differing in body size, beak shape and feeding behavior. Changes in the size and form of the beak have enabled different species to utilize different food sources such as insects, seeds, nectar from cactus flowers and blood from iguanas all driven by natural selection. Here you can see the Darwin's finches where the seed eaters which had crushing bills were large ground finch, Geospiza magnirostris, medium ground finch, Geospiza fortis. Small ground finch, Geospiza fulginosa. These sharp big ground finch, Geospiza difficilis. All these four have crushing bills. The cactus eater, cactus ground finch, Geospiza scandens. The seed eaters and the cactus eaters are considered to have ground finches. When you see on the left side, it has a bud eater, which is a parrot like bill. The vegetarian tree finch. Latispiza crassirostris, large insectivorous tree finch, Camarincus cetacula, small insectivorous tree finch, Camarincus parulus, woodpecker finch, Cactus pisa pallida, warbler finch, Certidia olivacea. The insect eaters have warbler finch, woodpecker finch, small insectivorous tree finch and large insectivorous tree finch. These on the left side if you see have grasping bills and the probing bills. The vegetarian tree finch, the woodpecker finch are all tree finches. Whereas the woodpecker finch, the warbler finch and the cactus crown finch are all probing bills. The image represents some of the finches observed by Darwin. Genetic variation in the ALX1 gene in the DNA of Darwin finches is associated with variation in the beak shape. Mild mutation in the ALX1 gene leads to phenotypic change in the shape of the beak of Darwin finches. Marsupials in Australia and placental mammals in North America are two subclasses of mammals. They have adapted in similar way to a particular food resource, locomotory skill or climate. They were separated from the common ancestor more than 100 million years ago and each lineage continued to evolve independently. Here you can see the Australian marsupials, wombat, sugar glider, cola, opossum, kangaroo, numbat, wallaby, quoll and Tasmanian devil. Despite temporal and geographical separation, Marsupials in Australia and placental mammals in North America have produced varieties of species living in similar habitats with similar ways of life. Their overall resemblance in shape, locomotory mode, feeding and foraging are superimposed upon different modes of reproduction. This feature reflects their distinctive evolutionary relationships. Over 200 species of marsupials live in Australia along with many fewer species of placental mammals. 
the marsupials have undergone adaptive radiation to occupy the diverse habitats in Australia, just as the placental mammals have radiated across North America. Here you can see the convergent evolution, the niche on the left side, the placental mammals and the Australian marsupials. When you take the burrowers, they are the placental mammals are the mole and the Australian marsupials are the marsupian mole. Anteater, placental mammals are the lesser anteater and the Australian marsupial is the numbat. The mouse, the placental mammal is a mouse and the Australian marsupial is the marsupial mouse. When you take the climber, the placental mammal is lemur and the Australian marsupial is the spoiled cuscus. When you take the glider, the placental mammal is the flying squirrel and the Austin marsupial is the flying phalanger. When you take the cat, the placental mammal is ocelot and the Austin marsupial is the Tasmanian tiger cat. When you take the wolf, the placental mammal is the wolf and the Austin marsupial is the Tasmanian wolf. So today in evolution part 3, we discuss about the various theories of biological evolution. So thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Med Prep Academy. Register for UG and PG NEET like MCQs in our website www.readmedprepacademy.com. Our Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com. Our Instagram is Read Med Prep Academy. Kindly post your questions in the comment box regarding the lecture. We will reply with appropriate answers. Join Read Med Prep Academy for preparation for UG and PG NEET. Kindly WhatsApp the number given below. Thank you very much.